totally is made. Is that a uh, the way the hexagonal toroid is made is that it's like a fortune cookie except reversed. Unlike a regular fortune cookie, which goes which has the edge facing the outside, a hexagonal toroid has the edge on the inside. Which may not be a very good explanation, because you, probably, because you may not know what I'm talking about. So, I'm going to try to find an image. Because there is, because like, a hexagonal toroid is rather difficult to imagine. Okay. Well, I think this looks about right. I'm going to, uh... There we go. That is a hexagonal torus. Hold on while I bring up my there. That's what it looks like. Now hold on while I figure out how to do that. Turn off my camera. So that is pretty much how the borders of the planes are shaped. In Tusk. Tusk is a hexagon. It is a hexagonal, and I believe that each edge of the hexagon is about is it somewhere like 200 kilometers, I think. Somewhere around there. I don't remember the exact number. I don't have it in front of me. But it's about 200 kilometers. So, what does this mean? Well, The the way the reason it's a toroid is because well it's a torus but it's also like a hexagonal honeycomb design on another scale it's only a torus within itself because well when you walk well to answer the question what happens if you walk off the edge of the world but you can't cross dimensional borders well the answer is simple you can just fall um, through the torus you go onto the other side you. Right, if you, just like in the game uh, Pac-Man, in Pac-Man, if you go off the right side of the screen, you find yourself on the left side of the screen. You you, you go off the right and you find yourself on the left on the very same spot. Well, or rather the very same like height. If you go off the top, you find yourself on the bottom and on the very same left or right. Which that is the same way of what happens when you walk off of the hexagon of Tusk. If you were to travel off the edge with a boat, you would just find yourself on the other side. Right? If you go to a corner, you find yourself at the opposite corner. Or, well, let's see. Corner to a corner. Yes, I think you would find yourself there. Now, in that diagram, you don't. Because the problem with this version of a hexagonal torus is that you do have to, at the border, the, the um, orientation of everything has to be reversed over the border. Because 
e in the image, the way that a hexagonal torus was constructed is different than the way that I constructed toroids because, like I said, they're a teardrop. They're like a fortune cookie, except that the f the edge, right, where all the edges are, is on the inside and not on the outside. And, and again, it's shaped like a teardrop with a hole in the middle. That's all a teardrop with a teardrop shaped hole. And yet again, it is a toroid. It is a hex. It is a hexagon, except that because you are connecting from an edge to an opposite edge, you can't just make a teardrop in which the two sides connect. And uh, how do I? You know, it's rather difficult to explain this without having a 3D model of a hexagonal torus that I can use to explain it. I don't, I don't have a model. This is, I, if you are confused, I understand. Don't worry. Um, but with a torus, it is not a closed loop. It is not a... Okay, a balloon is filled with air. A rectangular torus, which is shaped like a donut, is filled with air like a balloon. A hexagonal torus is not. There is a pinch at the part where the... Let's say there's two sides, right? opposite sides. I'm going to go back to this diagram right here. In this diagram... The, as you can see, there is green, and there is blue, and there is red. Now, when, okay, you know what, I'm just going to use my finger instead of pointing with a, something else. What can I point with? I can point with a little green army man. Yeah, you can see that. So, if, if green is on this side, green is on this side, green is folded over just like in this picture, except that the blue and the red are not then caused to twist around the green so that the blue touches this part of the blue right here. Th yeah, this part of the blue. Instead, this red, okay, this red touches this blue and this red because the red and the blue, these two are touching, these two are touching, and the line that is formed such that it's shaped, okay, it's shaped like a paper boat, okay? Down, side, up. Well, if you have down so these these two sides, then the middle side stick becomes curved, like a teardrop. The straight side, which is green here, it becomes curved. Whereas these two sides, one one over here and one over here, they connect. After this one becomes curved, the two red and blue sides connect like this. Except that the red and blue sides are pinched together. They are touching. Red side connects only to the other red side. Even though, spatially, spatially, red and blue are touching. These, this red and this blue are touching. This red and this blue are touching. Yes, spatially, these, these two, all f four of these are touching each other, and they are sharing a single line as a border. Because it is, because yet again, teardrop line. But, then, because of this, because red goes to red, well, red can't do that. If it is on, if red is on the outside of this, if it's on this area, you know, the outside, it'll end up on the inside of red. 
because think of it this way: I have a finger. The fin. Well, actually, no. I'm gonna do it this way. I have a finger that's wa that's walking along, walking along the green part, walking along. But in order to, yeah. But once it goes on to the other side of this, if it end, it will end up on the outside. But because it came around, well, it'll still be in this position. But that's the problem. It'll be in this position, except that red will be facing such that you have to be in this position. If red, because you're going around, you have to, you have to go around, you have to go, yeah, you have to go around the top. If you're on exiting blue, you must go around, which works. But then you don't go around again. It's only one cycle. So you would have to go around twice in order to end up right side up. If the physics worked normally. But you see, mountain ranges couldn't exist that way. So you do... So there does have to be a flipping. Because blue goes around naturally, that's fine. Because, yet again, it's curved. It's not flat, which I can't make my finger... Okay, it's not flat like these two fingers, it's curved around like my fingers. Because it goes around naturally once, but it won't go around, it won't turn back, which, you know, it'll go the other way, but I can't turn my hand that way, so I'm gonna turn it this way. But it can't go around reversing, it can't go around continuing this path, and then going around further, till it gets to this position, because of the way that the red and the other red are connected. So everything, once it gets to the border of red and red, once it's already turned around, the border of red and red just causes everything to flip all of a sudden so that it doesn't have to deal with the spatial problems of having a hexagonal torus de designed in this way. So thanks. Uh, yeah, I hope that answered your question well enough. Thank you. Um, Thanks for watching.